Can the Ford Bronco Raptor defeat our winter test hill? We're going to find out right now on Driving Sports TV. The Ford Bronco Raptor is bigger, beefier, and more powerful than a standard Bronco. Today we're going to find out if all that extra capability pays off in icy conditions as we attempt to conquer our winter test hill. The goal? Get to the top. But it's not going to be easy. To succeed, the Bronco Raptor will first have to traverse our main lines. These consist of two hills and a level connector. These sections have been plowed to give the Bronco a fighting chance, but it's still very rough with several inches of compact ice and snow. If it's successful conquering the main lines, then we can move on to an unplowed section of the hill. This is over a foot deep of snow, and it's compressed, compact, icy, and very thick. I'm not talking about the winter wonderland style of fluffy white snow. No, this is Northwest concrete made of ice. <laughs> so will the Bronco Raptor succeed? Let me just say that I did come out here yesterday with my Ford Ranger Tremor on the standard General Grabber tires and I couldn't get up anything. So it's going to be a real challenge for the Bronco Raptor. Before we start, let's check out what Ford sent us. Under the hood is a twin turbocharged 3 liter V6 that produces up to 418 horsepower and 440 pound feet of torque. It's mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission and it powers all four wheels with Ford's on demand automatic four wheel drive system. The body is 9.8 inches wider than a base Bronco thanks to massive fender flares and big meaty tires. Our test vehicle included 17-inch alloy wheels wrapped in 37-inch BFG KO2 all-terrain tires in a 12.5 R17 fitment. For suspension, the Raptor features the Haas 4.0 system that includes Fox Live Valve Internal Bypass Semi-Active Dampers. It also has standard underbody protection, recovery hooks, front stabilizer bar disconnect, as well as front and rear lockers. Prices you see it here, along with a few extra options, $74,425 US dollars, including destination. Of course, it is important to take a look at the conditions before we drive out here. Now, what we're dealing with is compact ice and snow on top of mud. It's been probably around 28 to 32 degrees overnight, and now we're at 33. So it's right around freezing. We're not getting that nice hard freeze, which would actually improve traction in certain places. Instead, we get ice on top of slimy mud. So this is gonna be interesting. Now the Ford Bronco Raptor is equipped with KO2 tires. They are an all-terrain. They're fairly aggressive. Actually, they are very aggressive for an all-terrain. Uh, and they are peak rated, which should help uh, with these conditions. But the only way to really find out is to do it. So here we are behind the wheel of the Bronco Raptor again. I love this thing. Uh, it is just so crazy. We're going to start here in 4 Auto because that's what most people are going to use. And then as we need more capability, we'll layer on the features. And honestly, this, this Bronco Raptor has a lot of features. Um, I think the first thing, 4 Auto, let's just do it. Most people at this point would say, Oh, it's slippery condition. So let's go ahead and switch goat mode, which is the goes over any terrain system to slippery. Okay, we're in slippery. That didn't change anything. We're still in four auto. And what that should do is it should optimize the traction control system to deal with slippery conditions, like the name says. Okay, as we continue up, now I don't wanna to get too aggressive with the throttle. Wheel spin will just ice up under the tires. Let's go ahead and turn on the trail cam. Now I can kind of see what's right in front of me below. Oh, the problem is I don't see my angle anymore. <laughs> Let's toggle over to an angle uh, to a view. Okay, so my angle right now is at eight degrees. This is a nine degree, uh, nine degree climb, which, you know, is something you would find in the real world, absolutely. 
that is an acceptable grade for most roads. In fact, it is the reason this has a nine degree grade is so that uh, fire trucks can get up here. This is one of the uh, required access roads. Started to get into a muddy section there and I lost traction. So now I'm just gonna continue on. Oh boy, I lost momentum. And so I've kind of lost the plot here. Let's back up a little bit. The important thing here is surface. You wanna be on a surface that can get you moving. Uh, if you're dead in, in the water, in space, and move just spinning tires, you're not gonna have any success because you need to use momentum to keep you moving forward. But you also have to watch out for momentum because it can throw you off track. Okay, so in slippery mode, with the goat mode, uh, this did fine. Now it's just a matter of turning around up here. <laughs> so this thing has a lot of things that are really good going for it um, as we need them. We have front and rear lockers. We have these massive KO2s that we can air down if we have to. Uh, but so far, it is getting us through normal stuff. So if you're trying to, you know, can I get to the cabin on a plowed road? Yes, you can. We have now answered that. If you're a little concerned about a hill like this, because you don't know if there's ice underneath or something, you can always go into trail control mode. And then you basically hit a button down here and you hit set on the wheel. And then you can basically do hill descent control uh, both downhill and uphill and what this does is it optimizes uh, individual wheel braking as well as throttle to be able to keep you moving safely through tricky conditions. I am just tracking perfectly straight down here. I don't have my foot on the brake. I don't have it on the throttle. The vehicle is basically taking care of everything except steering. Now if I want to, of course, I can always put my foot on the brake. Trail control is still enabled. I just released my foot. And what it did is it took us from three mile per hour down to one mile per hour as I did that because it thought, hey, you put your foot on the brake, obviously it's a treacherous situation. Now that we did the climb like grandma would do it, it's time to try the fun way to see what's the difference here, right? So that was all basically in just four automatic and slippery mode. So now let's just punch it over to uh, off-road, which will give us more wheel spin. I'll put it into drive. Uh, it's locked the rear diff automatically. It says it's for off-road use. Yes, this qualifies. And it's in four high, so we're going to get a lot of wheel spin. So this is, <laughs> now that we've shown you can do it and what it takes to get up there, this is really just for fun before we move on to the next test. And here we go. This is the momentum technique. Uh, yeah, snowblower. Oh, 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 ditch, 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 ditch. Ah, out of the ditch. That was close. <laughs> so that was a lot more fun and it was successful. Yes, I also chewed up my road a little bit more. And for before those of you say, dude, you just chewed up the road for the next person. We own this hill. This is our hill. We built these roads. They're our roads. So if you are in the real world, beware of damaging trails. But if you own your own road, that's a good way to do it. I mean, really, if you're thinking about what vehicle would you want in weather conditions like this, I think a Bronco Raptor rates pretty high up there, uh, whether you're into flinging the back end out or if you just want something that's, you know, capable enough that you feel really safe. Okay, what we have here is a very sharp turn, so I'm gonna use the uh, turn control system, which will apply braking to the inside tire. I don't know if this is a good idea on snow or not, but eh, let's give it a try. So it's now on trail turn assist is what they call it. That'll break the inside wheel and help me almost spin on the spot. What? That is amazing. Okay, I got turned. Turn that off and then drive out in theory. There we go. Okay, let's get ready for this hill climb. Oh, <laughs> This is gonna be interesting. So far, very impressed with what this Bronco Raptor can do, and you kind of expect it. I mean, for the money and for the just the insane specifications of this vehicle, it should do quite a lot. Uh, so right now, I'm just in four high. 
Ah, and I'm plowing into the berm. That's a problem. Don't want to get too deep into a problem. Now the issue here, just like on the other hill, is there's a lot of moisture under this snow and that's creating exceptionally slippery conditions. It's also difficult to find the line because it just wants to just go off. Oh, okay, this is deeper now. <laughs> okay, this is obviously where they lifted the plow a little higher. Ooh, that was maybe back a little too far. Go, 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 a little momentum. Okay, still just in four high. I think I'm gonna actually lock my rear diff and because this is a Ford, I can just hold it up here and it'll turn on. And oh, we're making it. <laughs> it's not without issues though. The uh, contours of the ground kind of want to send me other directions than my wheels are pointing. So I got to now, now that I'm aware, I got to overcompensate, kind of get through there. Okay, and then recorrect. Nice, we are doing it. So this is just four high uh, with the rear locker. Ah, whoa, 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 whoa. If I get in that ditch, it's potentially game over. It doesn't matter how capable this vehicle is. We do have a recovery vehicle, but uh, it'll have to get up here, which could be its own set of problems. Oh man, this is, uh, this is a little challenging, but it's actually doing really good. Ah, getting bogged down in that ditch. Okay, I'm having a lot of problems here with that contour of the ground. So I don't wanna to go too far to the right because there is a large drop right there and I don't want to, of course, go off the edge. Ooh, now my butt is going down into the ditch. Okay, this is, uh, whoa, this is problematic. Ah! <laughs> okay, we're having some issues here. I have half the vehicle in a ditch. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and what most people will do at this point, we'll switch it into slippery mode. Um, what are we gonna get with that? It puts it into four auto. It's also gonna optimize wheel braking uh, for this kind of situation. And then I'm also gonna use the paddle shifter here and switch into second gear so I have less power. See if that can get me through. Nope. Oh boy. Can I get, uh, uh, I feel like I'm just getting deeper into the hole. Come on, can I get out? Uh, okay, no. I need to charge it. The second gear slippery is not working. So let's switch it. Oh yeah, thanks. Auto start stop just kicked in. <laughs> so we're gonna go to four high. I'm gonna turn on the front camera here because I like a front camera. And let's see if we can get out of this. Oh, I think we're gonna have to use some little gravity. Let's turn little gravity. See if we can drive out through the thick stuff. Ah, to get back in line. Okay. I think we're back on the road. Ah. Boy, everything just wants to send me into that ditch. Like, ah. we can do this though. Ah. This is where the vehicle kind of is having its way. Okay, shift a little and then try to charge it out. Use gravity. Use the hill to get back on track. Okay, we are back on the road. Let's try to stay there this time. <laughs> okay, this is obviously very, very complicated. So I am going to air down the tires and see if that improves uh, this section. <laughs> so to air them down, I could just stick my finger into the uh, little nozzle, but I have a better way of doing it. So what this tool does is that it removes the little valve from the inside of the stem. So basically can air down as quickly as possible with no resistance. Uh, and then it also has a PSI gauge so I can hit my target pressure. And um, for these conditions, I'm first just gonna try about 18 PSI. So the whole point of airing the tire down is to actually uh, create a wider footprint. It's gonna be mushier and be able to grab snow better. It's not perfect in all conditions, but I think given the textures and the materials we're working with here on this particular road, uh, that it will give us an advantage. So if you've ever heard of something called a bead locker, that allows you to take this all the way down to practically zero PSI if you want a super floppy tire. But without a bead locker, 18 is usually pretty safe. 
Okay, now that we got the tires aired down, let's see what the truck says. Our pressures are 20 all around. So, you know, either this is a little off or my gauge is a little off, uh, but still close enough. They're definitely a lot squishier than they were before. Of course, it's warning me that I have low tire pressures. That's the point. Uh, I don't want to spin the wheels. I want a little bit more control over the throttle so I'm not just spinning. I want to kind of go a little bit slower. So I'm going to go down into four low. It's also going to amplify torque. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it just so I have a more easy throttle. Um, I do have to shift into neutral to do that. Back into drive. So four low. Traction off. Let's go ahead and lock the rear diff. And also I'm going to lock the front diff. Now, I don't have to disconnect the sway bar because I'm not having any issues with reach. So let's go and see how much more control we have here. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't fall into that ditch on the left, which it just kept sucking me into. And um, OK, remember all that struggle? It's gone. No more struggle. Whoa, 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 whoa. Spoke too soon. <laughs> okay, the, the, the course can still have its way with me. Backed up a little bit. We're back on the course. Uh, we have front and rear locker. We have lower tire pressure. We kind of got everything going on right now. Um, but, you know, I know, I'm sure somebody at this point is going to say, well, maybe that was just the lockers and the lower tire pressure doesn't change anything. So let's go ahead and we'll just keep it in four low because that's not going to make a huge difference. Uh, but I'm going to turn off my lockers and see if I can continue on here. Sure, why not? Let's turn that down. I gotta stay all the way to the right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Physics still applies apparently. Ooh, okay. Just keep it spinning, keep it spinning. Momentum is good. Yes. Oh, whoa, whoa. You know, with momentum like that, you can also get in over your head pretty quickly. But I have to say, the tire pressures are helping here. I really feel like I have a lot better grip than I had before. Because, like, right now, no lockers. And I am still moving. Ah, man, these, uh, these undulations are really tough to deal with. Um, I also want to see what kind of an angle are we dealing with here. This is only a 6 degree, 7 degree, but it's very, very bumpy, and the snow is deeper. Ah, look at that. It's a challenge, but we can definitely do it. What? Yeah. Okay, well, this is not the only challenge because now we got one more, and that's to see if we can get up, ah, uh, not fall off the cliff, and that's to see if we can get up uh, a completely unplowed section that is even steeper. Um, I do think we hit about 12 degrees there on the most extreme incline. Shift a little, move forward, boom through it. Uh. Now, the section we're in right now is not really truly plowed. It's where the plow tried to turn around and got stuck. Just to give you an indication of how tough this is. Okay, come on. Let's see if we can get that ah, momentum. want to get aligned here. There we go. There we go. Are we aligned? Are we aligned? It's making it an inch at a time. Okay. We are aligned and ready. I think almost ready. I think I want to air down just a little bit more because yeah, this is going to be nuts. So I'm just taking a short break before doing that final climb and I'm noticing that down here where I kept sliding into the ditch, it's because this is about a foot thick ice. Uh, over here, it's much softer, uh, and that's probably, probably because of water flowing underneath. It's keeping the temperature a little lower. So what's happened is, is because this is a shelf, the vehicle drives up, hits the ice, just slides right over. Let's finish this. Okay, now that we got all four of the tires down to about 12 PSI, let's take a look at the conditions we're dealing with here and then give it a try. Come on over here. So as you can tell, this is 
about a foot of snow. This is where we uh, started and then backed off to reset the vehicle. So this is light fluffy snow on top, but there's only an inch of that. Under that, that's like, that's ice. And then below that, we have soft mud. This isn't even frozen. So we're dealing with three very, very treacherous uh, surfaces all in one. We got the tire pressures lowered. Let's see what the car says. Car says 13 all around. Again, pretty close. I'm currently on a five degree pitch and a four degree angle. Okay, so I got the tire pressures down. I'm just gonna gun it. I just wanna see like full bro mode. What can the Braptor do? Uh, so we're gonna turn on front locker, cause why not, right? Live a little. Okay, so we got front locker, we got rear locker. I'm in drive. I'm gonna start in second gear. Let's see what this does. Into the deep. I'm just gonna keep the throttle in and see if we can do this. Now I've seen tons of video on Facebook and YouTube where people are talking about how awesome the Braptor is in the snow with the KO2s. Yeah, but they don't do it on hills. They do it on um, flat parking lots. Hills are a massive challenge. Boom, breakthrough. And what do we got? Oh, we're doing it. We're at 10 degrees. Six, uh, oh, slight tilt there. Change, so we're about 10 degrees. I am pausing for a moment before putting in reverse because you don't want to like shock the system. This has enough horsepower where you could, you know, if you're jamming it while the engine bits are still spinning, yeah, you can cause damage there. Okay, floor it. Oh yeah, we're making it, we're making, we're just using power to get up. Come on power, take me home. Take me home, slowly down. Okay, that's 14 degrees. We are making great progress here. And the snow, I think, is actually getting deeper. Yeah, that's some pretty deep snow there. And of course, like I said, there's mud underneath it, which just makes it even more difficult to get up. Punch through. So I don't want to like, you know, hit this at the, I don't want to go all the way to the bottom and just charge it. Because at that point, you run into the issue of having too much momentum. And then if you hit like a thing of ice or you get your momentum kind of off kilter, boop, you're off the side. So, you know, this is like a conservative charge, I think. Yeah, can we do it? Can we do it? Take me home. And that is the Ford Bronco Raptor. This thing, can it go anywhere? Yeah, yeah, it can. We just did that. <laughs> for Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them. I, I think today was one of the more enjoyable days for me, that's for sure. Woo, ah, love it. Yes!